Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending June the 25th, 2021. Well, what an interesting bullish week it has been as bond yields uh, stabilized in the 10-year, right around that 149 and 152 range where everybody's been comfortable uh, having them having them trade. So uh, right in the middle of that channel, you're seeing money moving out of, generally speaking, uh, shorter durations and into longer duration bonds. And that is fueling the growth trade again. And, uh, and the momentum trade is, is coming back. There's still some value trade out there, but certainly not at the, at the pace that the, uh, that the other trades are. Your, uh, your small caps are really banging one out and breaking out right now. Uh, mid caps, not so much, uh, kind of a flat to weak uh, uh, uptrend right there. Pretty, pretty much I'd say flat on the mid caps, but small caps, NASDAQ, uh, S&P 500, strong uptrends, very bullish uh, this week. So looking for really, return to a bullish week next week. Maybe we've got through a lot of that choppy water. Still gonna be some volatility, but uh, hopefully we, we wind up uh, Q2 on, on, on a real good up note. So uh, that'd be great. I thought this week, since we've talked about inflation uh, frequently, and last week we talked about its impact on seniors generally, it, it only is a natural and it behooves us to get into the um, discussion on long-term care that's the natural progression from inflation because uh, the health care is the biggest uh, impact on seniors, but moving into long-term care. But this doesn't just apply to seniors. This really, as I hope to demonstrate uh, to you, applies to everyone. Uh, long-term care is not a thing that happens to one person. Long-term care happens to a family. It happens to everyone, friends, family, everyone that uh, that knows the person that became afflicted uh, has an impact uh, on their life. So let's look at the facts and trends of long-term care in 2021. That from what the data we have right now, let's 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 get into that discussion. And so, first, let's start with the definition of long-term care. Long-term care is the care that you may need if you're unable to perform daily activities, living on your own. Things like eating, bathing, dressing, transferring uh, yourself from one location in the house to another, using the bathroom, all those, all those basic functions of life that you all of a sudden find yourself needing help to accomplish. The goal of long-term care is to help you maintain a quality lifestyle as you age. Medicare and Medicare supplemental insurance and health insurance that you might have are simply not going to pay for any long-term care after you after you've had more than really three months of it. Uh, that's 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 the uh, outer bounds of all that coverage, and things get uh, really changing from there. I wrote a book about it in my family. It's called Pack a Sweater. Uh, I, I want to update the book uh, uh, soon and 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 bring new data into it in terms of solutions that we had. But I have I have taught this uh, solutions to these uh, problems since 2015 to national audiences of lawyers, uh, financial advisors, uh, in terms of uh, uh, ethics and, 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 and mathematical solutions and legal solutions to finance these problems as you get past that three month mark and things aren't improving. So that, let me say that this applies to everyone. Um, uh, Seven out of ten people are going to need long-term care with basic activities, bathing, feeding themselves, or getting dressed at some point in their life. That's a huge statistic right now. And so we need to start talking about solutions. I want to talk about trends and drivers, the facts this week, and then, and then soon we'll get into, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about other solutions that are available. But let me tell you that there are, are suboptimal solutions and then there are more attractive solutions that are available but that's a topic for another discussion. Let me digress just for a point, sort of. It's a tangential thing, but get into the Alzheimer's and dementia type thing. It was a situation of stroke in my family. It wasn't Alzheimer and dementia, but uh, we, were, we were an outlier in that regard. But I had a brother and a father, uh, two generations in long-term care simultaneously. This takes me back six, seven years ago. So um, I wrote the book then, and that, and that I, you know, it wasn't anything that the universe had against us. We were simply a statistic of the of the current uh, societal norms that that are occurring in the United States. So one in three seniors right now 
uh, is dies from either Alzheimer's or some form of dementia. More than six million Americans are living with Alzheimer's right now. That statistic is growing rapidly. Between 2000 and 2019, deaths from heart disease have decreased 7.3 percent. While meanwhile, deaths from Alzheimer's have in, is increased 145 percent. So they figured out the heart muscle not so not so easy to solve with uh, the brain uh, situation. Uh, deaths have have, have spiked. Uh, because of Alzheimer's and dementia, 16% during the COVID-19 pandemic and, and, and since we're moving post-pandemic. But that's a tremendous increase uh, in that number. And so uh, this is something, it, it's killing more people than breast cancer and prostate cancer uh, combined. Uh, and, and the real tragedy here, and this is why I say it applies to everyone, is because over 11 million people, so almost double, the amount that have been diagnosed formally with, uh, with Alzheimer's or dementia, 11, over 11 million, almost twice that, that 6 million that have the disease uh, have been providing unpaid care for people with Alzheimer's or other dementia. Who's that naturally going to be? That's going to be family members, right? Or very, very close friends. They are providing an estimated 15.3 billion hours it's costing the society in terms of GDP $257 billion uh, from lost productivity that would otherwise be benefiting the society at large. You can get all of these statistics at alts.org. A-L-Z as in zebra. Alts, A-L-Z dot O-R-G, alts .org. You can get those statistics and go through that. Um, so if this is what's, we're having the driver on that end, uh, and then uh, uh, together with uh, other forms of, uh, of long-term care that are needed, let's then look at caregivers. Let's not focus so much on the person that's afflicted. They're the ones going to be needing the resources to be spent on, but somebody else has to have planned and gotten ahead, or you do it in an emergency crisis situation like, uh, like I had to do. Uh, to, to help out my family to, to get some sort of an optimal resolution to the situation. But uh, it, it's, it's better if you've planned ahead because somebody else is making all of those decisions about the care of the afflicted one and providing them because they can't do it on themselves. Right now, just shy of two-thirds, 62% of caregivers are using their own retirement and savings fund to pay for care for somebody else. And... Uh, just know that 100% of families are affected in some way. So it's long-term care is about everyone around that, uh, the, the afflicted person that, that knows and loves and cares for that person. It affects the entire family, not just that person that requires the care. If the son or a daughter is taking care of you, it might be bringing you closer in some way and helping you resolve maybe some old issues, etc. But providing the care is time consuming, it's stressful, it's exhausting for a caregiver. It, can take th and it takes them away from their own obligations to their own family, ch their children, their spouses, their career, their job. So to say we should address it from the caregiver's perspective all around. 58% of caregivers are between the ages of 25 to 54. The average age, uh, it was 47 in 2018 for the caregiver versus 53 in 2010. 51%, over half of caregivers are likely to be the adult child of the care recipient. And 56% of caregivers have children under the age of 18 that they're taking time away from, those are critical years, to provide care for the care recipient. Of those people surveyed, the caregivers, 52% of caregivers did not feel qualified to provide physical care, either they, that they know needed to happen or that they were currently doing. They weren't qualified to do it. 70% of caregivers missed time from work caring for it. And the average total out-of-pocket expenditures by the caregiver for the care recipient is $10,423 out of their own pockets for the uh, person in their family requiring the care. 
let's take a step back and look at what's driving these trends to some degree in terms of the lowering and average age of caregiver. In 2010, 81% of long-term care recipients were age 65 or older. In 2018, 57% were age 65 or older. That's a huge decrease. As you can see in the chart uh, to the right, uh, is somewhere probably you could expect 2025, if this data uh, continues on these trends, or, 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 or somewhere between 2025 and 2030, these lines would, would, would diverge, they would cross. And so what it is is accidents and rehabilitation are increasingly causing long-term care to be an issue for younger people, not just the older uh, seniors. So it has an impact on everyone in this society. Let's look at one final image of the negative impact on caregivers. Over half, 53%, reported high levels of stress, 46% reported health and well-being, 63%, almost two out of three are paying for care with their own saving and retirement funds for somebody else that they love, 42% reported the greatly reduced base quality of, of life for themselves. As far as career impact, 35% reported repeated uh, absences from work and almost a third, 30% reported missed career opportunities because of the need to take care of their young loved one. So again, this is a, a, a matter that's impacting everyone in the family. Long-term care, when we're planning for it, don't just think about yourself, it's those around you. Suicide's not gonna be an option because of the Alzheimer's statistics. You probably won't be able to remember how to do it anyway or what you were going to do by the time you found some instrumentality you're probably not going to be able to find the instrument to uh to to, to take that uh, god awful uh step to uh, resolve the situation so uh, the good news is is that i've taught national audiences on this topic of uh, solutions since 2015 both in terms of ethics uh, legal ethics and, and legal solutions and financial solutions to, to help resolve these problems. Let me tell you this, it's much easier to take care of these if you plan ahead now instead of waiting for the crisis and the emergency to come. It's very, very difficult to make good decisions under that kind of pressure. So if I can help you, and I'm sure that I can, if you want to actually uh, man up and, and, and address these issues, reach out to me, contact me at info at assetguidancegroup.com. Go to www.assetguidancegroup.com and uh, and and get a hold of me and we can get together and talk about really reasonable and um, uh, useful ways to solve these problems through early planning and if you find yourself that you're in this situation uh, that you're closer than you wanted to be if you're in that danger zone don't hesitate to reach out there's still uh, things that we can do it's not too late all right uh, it's been a great week this week Looking forward to an even better week next week as we close out the quarter. And I look forward to seeing you again then. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.